Hi, I'm Nicole Moore, Accredited Practicing Dietitian. Today's masterclass is all about calories and why counting and restricting them is not the answer. First of all, why do diets never seem to work? Why does the weight that we lose always seem to creep back on? Well, restricting calories on a low fat, low calorie diet fails because it puts you into metabolic slowdown. It's a guarantee. Placing type 2 diabetes into remission relies on burning off the body's excess glucose. So a calorie restricted diet will not work to put type 2 diabetes into remission. The Defeat Diabetes way of eating is about teaching you how to lose weight successfully if that's your goal and send type 2 diabetes into remission without having to restrict how much you eat. Counting calories and restricting portions can lead to a poor relationship with food while depriving you of energy and important nutrients. Let's start by asking what exactly is a calorie? The calorie is a measure of the energy that is released by food as we digest it and that we use when we exercise. Calories going into the body is like petrol going into a car. It fuels the body so it can function every day. In a nutritional sense, carbohydrates, sugars, fats, proteins and alcohol are all sources of calories which people need to live and function. Each of these macronutrients has a certain amount of energy or calories. Fats have nine calories per gram. Carbohydrates and protein have four calories per gram and alcohol has seven calories per gram. We digest food and use this chemical energy to breathe, move and function every day. The old weight loss model of calories in versus calories out taught us that in order to lose weight, we needed to eat fewer calories and to move more. It taught us that calorie dense foods were bad and we should eat less, particularly less fat as this is the most calorie dense nutrient. I'm sure we've all at some stage tried to diet and go on an awful low calorie diet eating low fat foods to lose weight. However, this theory assumes that the human body treats all calories the same, irrespective of where they come from, carbohydrates, proteins, fats or alcohol. And we now know this is simply not true. We cannot assume that 200 calories of sugar will impact the body in the same way as 200 calories of fatty salmon, right? Of course, some high calorie foods are bad for us, such as deep fried chicken and pizza. But healthy sources of fat, such as meats, avocado, olives, coconut, dairy, fatty fish, nuts and seeds, butter and olive oil are calorie dense foods. So does this mean they are all bad? No, these are real foods and provide the body with essential nutrients, including fat soluble vitamins A, D, E and K. And these fatty foods impact insulin and blood sugar differently, which is the key to successful weight loss and putting type 2 diabetes into remission. Macronutrients affect our body differently and understanding this is the key to losing weight successfully and defeating diabetes. Let's dig a little deeper. Carbohydrates, both the simple sugars added to foods like cakes, biscuits, sauces, dairy and breakfast cereals, and starchy carbohydrates such as bread and pasta, all release large amounts of glucose into the blood. If you have type 2 diabetes, this is a problem. When we go on a low fat, low calorie restricted diet, we tend to fill up on low calorie, high carb meals and snacks. Carbohydrates increase blood sugar and circulate insulin, which switches on fat storage and switches off fat burning. This affects our hunger and satiety hormones, ghrelin and leptin. So we feel hungry 
and less satisfied all day and can't lose weight because fat storage is switched on. And because our body cannot access the fat storage freezer, we run out of fuel quickly and need to feed frequently to keep our bodies topped up. So carbohydrates make our blood sugar levels spike and make us hungry and fat. Fat is the premium fuel for our body, the most energy dense nutrient. Replacing carbohydrates with healthy fats actually helps you to burn fats for fuel by lowering circulating blood sugar and insulin levels. When insulin levels are low, fat burning is switched on and fat storage is switched off. When we burn fats, we burn a mixture of dietary fat and stored body fat. This gives us access to more energy or fuel. So we tend to burn more energy while naturally eating less frequently across the day. Replacing carbohydrates with healthy fats also lowers the amount of glucose in the blood. So defeating diabetes is very successful on a low carb, high fat diet. So basically, replacing carbohydrates with fats turns on the fat burning switch, reduces hunger and lowers blood sugar levels. Hopefully now you must be convinced that all calories are not equal. Sugar calories impact our body differently to fat calories and fat wins. We've also been convinced that we should eat regular meals and snacks throughout the day especially snacks that are low in fat and contain carbohydrates like dry crackers and fruit. Eating often triggers lots of glucose spikes over the day, which in turn triggers insulin spikes over the day. This means we will be constantly hungry and in fat storage mode throughout the day due to elevated insulin and blood sugar. Also, glucose spikes can lead to blood sugar drops. So over the course of the day, we suffer a roller coaster of spikes and drops, which can make us feel irritable, crave sweet foods and suffer mental fog and fatigue. We're constantly hangry, hungry and angry. We can now see why eating regular low fat, high carb meals and snacks is not the answer to putting type two diabetes into remission. A fat rich meal will keep blood sugar and insulin stable. Switch on fat burning mode, keeping you full for long periods with no snacks required. You will feel happy and satisfied. One last point to discuss is why calorie restricting is extremely problematic for people with type two diabetes. People with type two diabetes who have severe insulin resistance who are eating low calorie, high carb foods will experience elevated insulin levels that block the body's ability to access fat for fuel. If our body can't access fat for fuel, then it needs glucose. But we know that in type two diabetes, due to insulin resistance, the body is not very good at moving glucose from blood to cells for energy. This puts the body into starvation mode. And it simply tries to store and produce more glucose to try and reach the energy demands. You cannot drop weight. You constantly suffer from high blood sugars and are hungry and irritable. What a vicious cycle. So restricting calories with low dense, low fat, high carb foods just worsens this cycle. People gain weight feel hungry all the time, suffer from chronically elevated blood sugar levels and insulin and continue to become more resistant. This cycle continues until eventually sugars are so chronically high that you will be put on insulin and start suffering from many other health issues. What have we learned today? We've learned that replacing carbohydrates with quality proteins and healthy fat is the solution to lowering blood sugar and insulin levels and turning on the fat burning switch and feeling less hungry 
and more energised. We've also learned that you do not need to count calories. Just feed your body the right type of calories as we most definitely know now, not all calories are equal. Take a look at the delicious Defeat Diabetes recipes to help you make these changes. I hope you have enjoyed and learnt a lot from this masterclass and I look forward to seeing you next time.